Autistic masking and camouflaging. What are they? What's the difference? How can you spot them? And what can you do about it? Hi everyone, Paul Mikalev here from Autism From The Inside. I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism, so make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. So if you've looked into autism for any length of time, you've probably come across the terms masking and camouflaging. You may have heard that camouflaging is really common in autistic women, and you may be aware of some of the seriously damaging consequences that masking can have on our mental health. So in this video, I'll take you through what masking is and how it relates to camouflaging. We'll examine what they look like and how you can spot the behavior in yourself and others. And finally, what you can do about it if you're looking to take off the mask to understand your autism better and find healthier ways of coping with the world. So very briefly, what is autistic masking? Essentially, masking is a strategy to appear more normal, to hide or draw attention away from anything that would otherwise identify us as different or disabled in any way. For example, hiding our atypical preferences, ignoring sensory issues and putting up with bright lights or background noise without telling anyone, wearing socially appropriate clothing instead of what makes you feel comfortable, suppressing mannerisms like twirling your hair or tapping your fingers or other stimming behavior. There are so many potential examples, but they're all designed to fit in with mainstream expectations and values, to mask our difference so that no one notices. Camouflaging then is one common masking strategy. If I simply blend into the background and don't draw any attention to myself, no one's gonna notice that I'm different. Camouflaging is contrasted with another common masking strategy, which is compensation. If I put up a strong, socially acceptable facade, no one's gonna notice what's underneath. And so often when we talk about wearing a mask, we're actually referring to this compensation strategy of actively projecting an image. My dreadlock mask was a really good example of this. Hey everyone, look at this cool thing that I've got, this cool thing that I can do, and please pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. In my case, my mask, my compensation strategy, to adopt the role of the smart guy, the geek, the intellectual, who gets by in the world without relying on strong social skills. I lent on my strengths to compensate and draw attention away from what I was not naturally good at. As you can see, this type of masking is a lot closer to the stereotypes that we often associate with autism and Asperger's. And as such, it has a very strong male cultural bias. For someone like me, for example, it's culturally safe to be strong, assertive, and even a bit disagreeable, and that's seen as good. The same cannot necessarily be said for other genders and cultural minorities. This is where the other masking strategy of camouflaging comes in. When it's potentially dangerous to stand out, it's a lot safer to blend in. And this is one of the reasons that camouflaging is commonly associated with autistic women. But of course, it's just one strategy and anyone may end up using it from time to time depending on the situation. So what camouflaging looks like is blending into the background so as not to draw any undue attention to yourself. It looks like B's and C's at school. It looks like stereotypical interests based on your age, gender, and culture. It looks like being pleasant and non-threatening, being small and polite and nice, and just boring enough for no one to really probe that any further. If you achieve just the right level of conformity in how you dress and how you behave, then you'll essentially fly under the radar. People will see you, but not really notice you. It will look like you're being included, even though that's only superficial and you're actually not building strong social connections. The quintessential camouflaging example is the quiet girl at school who has some friends, but no close friends. She's tolerated, even cared for potentially by the group, but doesn't really have any significant social rank in any way and is easily passed over by everyone as invisible, insignificant, inconsequential, but not causing enough problems for anyone to do anything about it. Camouflaging can be an extremely effective strategy, but it's also an incredibly isolating strategy. Well-camouflaged autistics are experts at social niceties, so much so that it's almost impossible to spot until you examine their close interpersonal relationships. I don't personally do a lot of camouflaging, it's just not really my style as I described earlier. But one good example might be my first job interview. I knew what I was supposed to do and I practiced and practiced and practiced so that my performance in the interview was flawless. I got my first pick of graduate engineering positions at one of the largest aircraft manufacturers in the world 
and no one for a second suspected that maybe my brain was wired differently. Another example could be when I go to a wedding or a funeral. It's not about me, so I essentially do everything I'm expected to do. I put on a suit, I dress the part, I behave in an expected appropriate way and do not draw any undue attention to myself. I'm polite, I smile, I engage in small talk until eventually my social duty is over and I can go home. When trying to camouflage, if something is uncomfortable, I just put up with it, ignoring my own needs as long as I have to. So I'm sure you can imagine how adopting this as a life strategy is problematic, to say the least. So how can you spot masking and camouflaging? I actually did an entire video on this, but essentially you're looking for inconsistencies from one area of life to the next. If I'm a very different person with my family versus with my friends, well, what's going on there? There's probably more to that story. If you're trying to spot masking and camouflaging behavior in yourself, you can instead look for internal inconsistencies. Why do I go to the pub if I don't like drinking beer? Reading about the stories and strategies of other masked autistics can also help. So as usual, I'd encourage you to reach out and meet other autistic people either in your local area or online. In my experience from my life coaching work, the unmasking process has several factors. There's self-acceptance, there's creating alignment with your own values, and then finally developing your own assertiveness and self-confidence so that you can effectively advocate for yourself in the world. Essentially, if you're confident about who you are and how you want to show up in the world, you can construct an authentic, socially appropriate version of your true self to both stand in your own integrity and succeed in the world at the same time. So finally, I'll leave you with a book recommendation that you might like to look into to learn more about masking, camouflaging, and also to hear stories of other autistic people going through the unmasking process. It's by an autistic and trans social psychologist in the US who is actually one of the speakers at this year's Autism from the Inside online summit. So I'm excited to announce that this year's event is scheduled for the 23rd of October. It's a free week-long online summit event featuring a selection of hand-picked actually autistic speakers who are world-class experts in their field in their own right. So take a look in the video description for instructions on how to get your free ticket to that. So as I was saying earlier, one of those actually autistic experts has written a fantastic book on this topic. His name is Dr. Devin Price, a social psychologist from Chicago, and he's written a book called Unmasking Autism, The Power of Embracing Our Hidden Neurodiversity. So I'll put a link to that in the description as well if you're interested. So I might leave it there for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out my website for the latest details of this upcoming online summit in October. And as usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye.